Welcome to the Modern Aristotelian, the show where we brainwash you to become one of the many Alexanders. That's right, folks, you're no longer going to be human. You're going to be simply another Alexander. And the Alexander we're talking about specifically, so you're just going to be another Alexander the Great. Why? Because we are discussing stuff from his teacher Aristotle so that you may become Alexander the Great and no longer a pathetic human. Okay, now, what we're discussing today is the organon. And this is in the topics. Now, I want to talk really quick about some of the things I really don't like about this translation, even though I praise it highly, because it's the only real uh, complete translation I know. As the uh, everything from the categories, on interpretation, prior analytics, posterior analytics, topics, and uh, sophistical reputation. But the issue with this, actually, I will be addressing this video somewhat, because, for example, in the four sources of argumentation, when I look at the second one, and I'm going to read this word for word, note that this is not a mistake on my part. The power to distinguish in how many senses a particular expression is used. And that's grammatically incorrect. Doesn't even sound right. Is used. That's more like are used. That sounds much better than is used. Is the power to to distinguish in how many senses particular expression is used. Or you could have put a particular expression is used. That would have sounded better. This guy probably knows his Greek very well. But his English is poor. Alright, now enough of my linguistic analysis. Even though we will eventually get to linguistic analysis when we talk about the categories and other parts of this book, including the Lorenzo Batmala attack on the peripatetic school, which will be reserved for another video. So the four sources of an argument. One is the securing of proposition. Two is the distinguishing in how many senses a particular expression is used. The third is the, the discovery of the differences. Of things. And the fourth is an investigation of its likenesses. So when we are going to the, uh, look at this, I'd actually say the first one should be the last really because you can't really secure things if you do not know all this other information. You can't really create a proposition. You can't really listen to your opponent first or listen to the facts first and think about things before you even begin to hope to make a proposition because what happens is that you might be arguing and you won't understand something of your opponent and so there's no really big use it's all futile to even begin to try to secure your uh, proposition in fact instead I'd say that first and foremost you need to look at the different like the differences in likeness of things because if you do not know the differences in likeness then how can you really move on and after that you have to look at the second proposition according to their cell and then back to the first I mean like it seems like you start at the bottom and go up not uh, top go down because when you go from the bottom and up in this list kind of set up a firm foundation which you set your argument up upon. Now this is one thing you need to do. Um, then how do you uh, give a good proposition? Well there are actually a few different types of propositions. One is if A then B. Second would be disjunctive which would be either A or B we have some are A or B's 
some are not A or B. You have all are A or B. All are not A or B. Some, some are either or. Some are not either or. And you also have both. And the both and is another proposition. And when you get this, you plug in your data. So if puppies have fur, then uh, my dog has fur. My dog might be a might have been a puppy. Now that's a weak argument because even cats have fur. Uh, so another one would be the classic all men are mortal. Socrates was a man. Therefore, Socrates was a mortal. You also have the differences between the argument that comes from the induction than the deduction. So the difference would be like if I were to go with a triangle, the deduction would be you start out with this universal and gradually go to a particular. While a uh, induction goes from you start out with the particular, expand, expand, expand to the universal. So pretty much if I were to say that all apples are red, I might be stupid in a way because or I, this is imprecise rather because not all apples are red. So the induction would not work here. It would be more some apples are red. Some apples then when you go from some apples are red look at more at the idea that there are such a thing as the red apples then you conclude that some apples are red some are not and I just got through bad habit again so anyway I'm just gonna, gonna close next time I'm gonna be more particular with what I'm saying in I tried a little bit with this one and I kind of screwed up with my examples because I like to talk even if it sometimes wears out my voice if I talk too much and too excitedly. So welcome to Game Philosopher where we discuss anime, manga, gaming, philosophy, politics, whatever you want. See you next time. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, the bell button, comment. Uh, tell me your criticism and if you're a troll there